coming to get you. Welcome to the Fear Central Podcast. I am Mike. First, Heather. Paul. And we are once again here to uh, enlighten you in what we believe uh, about the horror genre. Yes. So, uh, we thought we'd take this week and do what we're dubbing Forgotten Fright. Uh, so what that means is we're going to talk about some movies that uh, we feel the the people just don't think about anymore or discuss or talk about or even remember, possibly. Right. So we figured that. And for those of you that are just getting into horror, maybe a younger generation, just learning horror, this would be a good way to learn about some movies that are from possibly from the past that you're like, never heard of it. Maybe I'll check it out. Yeah. So... Um, we'll get started. Paul, you want to kick us off? Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm gonna. My first selection is just because, just for the simple fact that there's a certain movie with the same title that has completely overshadowed this movie. I'm picking the movie Frozen. Frozen. Okay. Yeah. So it has one of the stupidest premises ever. Then yep. you're gonna think, how can you even stretch this out for an hour and a half? Because you want to build a snowman? <laughs> but uh, the movie is from the director of uh, Hatchet, uh, Adam Green. Adam Green, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's about three, uh, three uh, college-age students who end up stuck on a ski lift <coughs> over the weekend in the, in the, in, uh, the, middle, of a, in the middle of a snowstorm. Oh, Okay, and so it's Anna, Elsa, and Olaf. They're, yes, they're stuck yeah, up there? They're, yeah, they're stuck in there, oh, and there are wolves and all sorts of other elements they have to they have to deal with. Oh, really? It is a very watchable, like survival horror flick. Yeah, I actually haven't had a chance to watch that one. I, I, well, I should say I haven't taken the time to mm-hmm. watch that one. Uh, but I remember hearing about it first when we uh, went to the Texas Frightmare Weekend. Yeah. Uh, they were giving away the little mini posters and stuff about it, and I just I just haven't taken the time. Yeah. Um, seems like it would be really interesting because it seems like it's based really on um, being alone and what being alone can, can do to the mind. Yeah. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. it, with, the, with that scenario, obviously, they give all sorts of reasons why they get they get missed by the people that are in the ski resort and everything like that. You know, halfway up the mountain, electrics turn off and like people all leave. Everybody's leaving because of the snowstorm, so they get stuck there and everything. Right. But uh, so the 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 bottom line theme is probably abandonment. Yeah. 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 And they're you know it gets to it gets to a point that because of the weather and everything like that and all the elements they have to they end up having to get off the lift obviously. Right. And they're getting frostbite and everything. Yeah. So kind of like the thing without the creature. Mm-hmm. Just... And, I, and I do wonder if they cho- if it was a very specific casting choice. One of the, uh, one of the uh, people that's stuck on the lift is uh, Iceman from X2. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, couldn't he just ice ramp him off there? I mean. I, he, he didn't have the powers oh, for some man. stupid reason. I don't know. What? I mean, ev- that. actors should always be the same character in every movie. Right? They should be. Because <laughs> we would love to see Rocky as Judge Dredd. He's, hey, <laughs> hey, yo, I, I'm the law, okay? Like, I'm the law, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious. Yeah. So, okay, Frozen. Um, yeah. Heather, you got one? I have several, actually. Well, I can't hear you. Where'd you go? Mic off. Oh, I don't know why that. that happened. Whoa, I got several, several, several. Okay. Yeah. Um. So I guess the first one I'm going to go with was is one that I don't think that you have seen, but Paul and I have seen. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's Eyes Without a Face. Right. Yeah. No, I haven't watched that one yet. It's a French film. It's old too, isn't it? Uh, 1960. 60. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is. It's. It's great. It's about. I've, l- I've listened to the song though. Yeah. It, and that's what the. That's what the. Uh, that's what the movie is. That's where the song is based on. Is right. that movie, and um, it's about a doctor who's trying to find a new face for his daughter, and so he kid him and this other him and this nurse. They kidnap people, these ladies, and 
hold them captive right. and cut their faces off, and he sews them on to the his daughter. Yeah. And, I've seen uh, several, several parts of it. I've just never watched it straight through. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. I mean, it's subtitled, but it was I enjoyed it. It's mainly visual. There's not a whole lot of dialogue. There's not a whole lot of dialogue. It's a lot of yeah. pretty... I mean, it's black and white, but... It's. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, Criterion has the rights to it. Yes. Oh, distribution, so it's a very gorgeous transfer. Yes. But. Yeah. Isn't it on uh, HBO Max right now? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. I believe so. So if you haven't had a chance to check it out, uh, that'd be a good place to yeah. start. Yeah, that's a good If one. you don't want to have to pay to rent it or buy it or whatever. Yeah. Because, Paul, you, well, you both are really big into foreign films yes. compared yes. to me and Chris. Yes, I like a foreign film. Definitely. Yeah. My problem is I just don't want to spend the time reading them. <laughs> well, and a lot of times, it's the elevator. It's fine. It'll stop in a minute. Oh. Um, a lot of times with those, some of them are hard to watch, especially if they're really fast. Yeah. And if you're not a proficient reader, right. then it can get cumbersome to yeah. try to watch it, it and all, read at the same time. Yeah, because it always seems to me that I end up inadvertently spending more time reading than paying attention to the film and I end up missing the film and, and right. what's going on. So, Eyes Without a Face. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Where are we going here? Oh, we're over to you. Nope, we're over to you. Nope, you. Oh, no. <laughs> See, clock. What, what did I do, did you, Paul can't do the jumble thing. We got to do the counterclockwise here. Thing. The jumble thing. Yeah. Well, jumble juice? I have... No, wait, crisscross. That's all right. I have a couple. Okay. Um, Little Shop of Horrors. Is it a good one? It is a good one. From 1986. Oh, you're going with that one. Rick okay. Moranis? I am, because a lot of the people won't know the old black and white one. Yeah. Well, that's why we're so, doing this. Yeah. Um, so people know. Yeah, it's, it's about Seymour, who's a plant. Seymour Butts? Oh my god! Seymour's <laughs> not Seymour's a plant. Seymour's not the plant. No, Seymour's sorry, the plant. Seymour's not Feed the plant. Feed me, Seymour. Uh, Feed me, Seymour. No, Audrey's the plant. Feed me, <laughs> Seymour. <laughs> so, uh, Rick Moranis plays Seymour. Sorry, and he pines for his coworker Audrey, played by Ellen Green. And during a total eclipse, he discovers the plant named Audrey too, which feeds on, feeds on human flesh and blood. So as it continues to eat humans, it continues to grow, and it makes this business that was basically going bankrupt. Boom. Oh, he was a florist, wasn't he? No, he was an assistant. Oh. And... Yeah. um. Oh, well, he was taken in by Mr. Mushnick. Right. Oh, okay, okay. Right. Took him in, gave him shelter, a job, treats him like dirt, calls him a slob, which he is. Yeah. Um, But it was always one of those ones that, you know, late night it comes on, you got to watch it. It's yeah. amazing. It, it's, a, it's a great horror comedy. And the practical effects in it were very, very, very good for the time. And mm-hmm. most of the original cash cast from the black and white version were in the um, the 80s version. So the original version came out in uh, 60s it, or the original one was only made in like seven days. Yeah. 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 It was made on a very cheap by Roger Corman's production team. Oh, uh, that's his that's his. But then it was turned into a stage play and then that stage play was turned into the Right. 86, uh, right. 86 musical. Yeah, because, well, Corman's infamous for his uh, tight schedules and, mm-hmm. you know, strict budgets. But a lot of great directors have come from it, so. Yep. Yep. So, um, my other one was House of Wax, 1953. Okay. Starring uh, Vincent Price, of course. It's a good one. Yeah, it's the original. So the Vincent Price plays the wax sculptor Henry. Um, he learns that his partner is going to torch the wax museum to collect the insurance. Henry survives, and um, 
emerges with Matthew some years later with a wax museum of his own. But the sculptures in the museum turn out to be um, basically corpses that have, you know, people have come up vanishing from the city. So mm -hmm. sorry, I had to. I had to. Exit it's actually the room for really a well That's done, and the sculptures in it, wax. Uh, I believe, were done by um, Madame Tussauds. Yeah, Madame Tussaud. 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 Whatever. <laughs> that person. Um, it was actually very well done. Uh, I did see the remake of House of Wax. Which is a remake of Tourist Trap more than it is a yeah, remake of Yeah, I was going to say, I thought we talked about before where the remake is not really in line with the original. I only watched it to see Paris Hilton die. Impalement. I think that most people did. That was amazing. Fantastic. I love it. It, was, it wasn't a bad movie. No. Like it, the wax sculptures in there were actually very well done. Yeah. Um, and then my third one is Monster Squad. <laughs> Wolfman's Got Nards? Yeah, Wolfman's Got Nards from 1987. <laughs> it's not really a horror movie, but I was thinking about my kids today, and I was like, man, you know, it, it's not really a kid-kid movie, but it's not really a horror movie. It's kind of one of those... Uh. It's the one I grew up with instead of Goonies. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I didn't it, watch Goonies until I was at it's, like 25. <laughs> it's the equivalent horror version of the Goonies, basically. Yeah. And I think it falls under the horror canon because it's all based on the traditional the UF Universal's monsters. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Wolfman little, little and Dracula. A little bit of the books, too. Yeah. 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 But, um, yeah, I, was, I loved it. And I loved how there was always that old German man. You know, just happened to be a random German man in the neighborhood. Van Helsing? That's what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that could translate the book. <laughs> Can you? Can you translate the book? <laughs> those were my picks. Okay. okay. Excellent picks. Mm -hmm. All right. I've got a couple myself. I'm going to start with one. Uh, I'm going to start with Event Horizon. Ooh, that's a good one. Uh, if you're into sci-fi and horror... It's a great mix. Um, it's also one of the few horror movies you get where you get some top A-list actors in it. Because you get... Uh, Lawrence Fishburne. Lawrence Fishburne. And Jason Isaacs yeah. in there. and Sam um, Neill. Sam Neill. Uh, which you'll probably know from Jurassic Park. Yeah. And what's her name from Nip Tuck is in it, too, isn't she? Uh, Kathleen Quin Quinlan. Yeah. You got Kath yeah, Kathleen Quinlan. You've got... That? Uh, Joey Richardson. That's who I was referring oh. to. Okay. Uh, Richard T. Jones. Um, yeah, Jason Isaacs, Jack Noseworthy, uh, Sean. Per Pertwee. Per Pertwee, yeah. I was yeah. like, I don't want to mis mispronounce that. And who's the director? Uh, that's Anderson. Yes. Paul, Paul W.S. S. Anderson. Anderson. Mm -hmm. Yep, his best movie. My you opinion. think so? Well, well, have you, I, I'd say it's better than any of the Resident Evil movies by quite a bit. Well, he just he just came out with Monster Hunter, so yeah, I have not watched that. one. I have not yet either. I would like to, <laughs> only because I'm not overly familiar with the game, so mm -hmm. I think it'd be a fresh take um, for me. Yeah. Well, there's not really a lot of plot to go with on those games, but right. Uh, no, Ben Horizon. He's got a fairly unique setting. I mean, you know, people will point to Alien when they say uh, horror on a, on a, in space, but the core concept of uh, Event Horizon is pretty unique. Yeah. Um, so the basis of the film is there's a ship called the Event Horizon spaceship mm -hmm. that has a completely new type of engine that's supposed to fold space-time so it can travel almost instantaneously to wherever they're going and it just disappears the first time they use it and then it shows back up years later yeah and so they send out a rescue crew to go including the designer of the ship or the designer of the drive right which is played by sam neill and uh you find out that evidently the ship is alive because of whatever dimension it got stuck in that they believe was hell liberate te to infernum <laughs> um, I wasn't going to tell you this. I've been listening to the distress signal, and I um, 
think I made a mistake in the translation. <laughs> That's the same. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we thought it said Liberate Two, but it, maybe it's Liberate Dete Two or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Meaning the ship is alive. Um, Save yourself from hell. <laughs> yeah. So the tagline is a haunted ship, a missing crew, and infinite evil. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a good build up too. Like it does. A, ni- a nice bit of atmosphere before crap just hits the fan. Yeah. <laughs> um, I really like Richard T. Jones in this one. He's like the comic relief guy. Yeah. But he does a really good job of, of stepping in at just the right moment and and then all of a sudden shit gets worse. Mm-hmm. So, but I, I really enjoy this one. Uh, like I said, if you're big into sci-fi and horror cross, that's definitely a, a really good one to uh, sink your teeth into. Uh, this one came out in 1997. So, not too terribly long ago compared to some of the others we've talked about. Mm-hmm. But I think it's it's a fun ride. Yeah, there are parts where it takes itself a little too seriously, and then there's parts where it's not super mm-hmm. serious. Fishburn's great. Absolutely. This is a tomb. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's my first one. Um, the initial cut <coughs> of the film ran for 130 minutes and was quite graphically violent. So much so that both test audiences and the studio balked at the finished product so evidently they had to cut a lot out in order for it to be uh, what Paramount would believe worth watching kind of now I want to see the director's cut (laughs) so uh, you have another one there Paul I do Uh, trying to trying to I've actually got like several lined up here and I'm just trying to decide whether I want to go with a weird one or not (laughs) The weird one? Yeah, I honestly <laughs> almost want to do this. Out of, I honestly almost want to bring this one up just out of uh, nostalgia. Because whenever, uh, whenever you're the horror guy among your group of friends, uh-huh. you tend to get invited over. Like, oh, it's Halloween. We'll have him bring movies to uh, to show or whatever. Right. And I had a, I had a double feature. The first film was Nightbreed. And the second one was this uh, was a Japanese movie from 2004 named Marabito. And the consensus from all of the college guys that were at this gathering who I'd never met was that I am freaking weird. And I just show them weird movies that they were stupid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> weird movies. Yes. Okay. So, so Marabito uh, stars a director known for disturbing visuals in his own right, uh, Shinya Tsukamoto. Uh-huh. Uh, he plays a loner who is like kind of video logging around Japan and everything like that. Ends up going underground and finding like a cave system that goes underneath the sewers. And whenever he gets down there, he finds a... Uh, Nude woman chained up to a ca- cavern wall. Okay. As you do. Right. And he decides to unchain her and bring her home and finds out that she seems to have some uh, unique traits, including jagged, like, animal-like teeth. Okay. And, like, uh, almost canine-like nails and <coughs> stuff like that. She uh, has a very unique diet and everything like that, and he feels that she is related to a, a primal species. I can't remember the name he has for him. It's like Ourobor- it's like Duraboros or something like that. But uh, it's very just kind of slow burn, like I have the, you know dealing with. It, like at first, the movie feels like it's all going to be about obsession and madness with this main character because he's got deep rooted problems. <clears throat> but he brings home, the, but he brings home this woman, and you're sitting there like it, you know the first time you watch this movie, you're sitting there just going, "Is she like?" He says that she is animal like and everything like that, but can you trust him? Like, what's actually going on? And. It's very slow burn, very uncomfortable movie. Oh, okay. 
And it came out when? Uh, 2004. 2004. Yeah. So not, not too terribly long ago. Mm-hmm. It is, uh, but uh, it is a uh, Takashi Shimizu uh, production, which I do believe, yeah, he's the guy that did all the grudge movies. Come oh, okay, on. okay. Yeah. It, all right. I rarely hear people talk about it. It's pretty good. Yeah. <clears throat> I can't say I've heard much about it. I have not either, but it sounds like something I need to watch. Yeah. What you got, Heather? You got another one? I've got a few more. Ooh. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Um, one that I f- have seen that I enjoy a lot, and I showed to Mike, and he enjoyed it too. It's called Contracted, and it came out in 2013. And it's about hold on. It says after being drugged and raped at a party, a young woman contracts what she thinks is an STD. But it's actually something much worse. Dun, dun, dun. And it gets much worse. <laughs> dun, so, dun. The, the premise is this girl goes to a party. She's a lesbian. She gets drugged and raped at this party. Right. By a man who apparently has been doing bad things with dead bodies. Ooh. Yeah. And so, she contracts this. Well, then things start happening to her. Um, they start, she starts, um, um, you the look on your face whenever you, you like, you, whenever you pause there, she starts and you're like, had this cringe. <laughs> it's like a cringe. Yeah. Cause like her hair starts to fall out and then her fingernails fall, her fingernails fall off and she gets this weird thing with her eye and she starts bleeding in like random places like her eyes bleed and her mouth and it's it's just gross but body, not not in a bad way body but, horror really does it for you it does <laughs> yeah. it does but so so this she is dating this lady and she finds out that she's had sex with a man so she breaks up with her and she goes moves back home with her mom and her mom thinks she's on drugs yeah I mean, she's not on drugs she's just Decaying. Decaying from the mm-hmm. inside out. And it it's a strong one. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a good one. It's intense. It is intense. There's a lot of very uh, intense moments. Yeah. Does, it, does this, how does this compare with the, uh, do you ever watch Afflicted? <laughs> That's the one about the guys. Yeah. Kind of found footage. They went to Europe on vacation. And, and, he, got one the, of them, and he gets the STD. That they right. Treat, like, one of them goes to the red light I district and comes back. I thought that was the second one. No. Contracted continues on with a man. another. Uh, I thought it was another girl. No, it's a guy. Huh. Oh, is it related? I contracted didn't know, con- phase I didn't know two. Contracted, so. Contracted phase two. Um, it's this guy, he searches for the cure. Oh, right, 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 right. Um, that overtook Samantha before it consumes him and the entire world. So it's like <clears throat> the. The creepy guy in the beginning works in a morgue, and he's experimenting with dead bodies and coming up with this virus or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, but the way his transmission method is like STD. Yeah. So, yeah, it's. I mean, if you haven't seen it, it's really it's it's a strong one. Yeah. Um, it takes a little bit of a strong stomach to get through some of the parts. The fingernail scene oh, gets yeah. me every time. It, oh. but yeah, um, it's worth the watch. It was it was one that I really hadn't. It came out before it follows. Yes, it did. I liked it a lot better than I liked it follows. Yes, it was. It had. It was stronger than it follows. I think, but it didn't get a lot of. It, hype. Did, it didn't get a lot of hype. Um, and I was going to say that uh, it's one of the few that, especially for low budget, where the sequel is is as good as the first one. It is. Um, yeah. Where usually the sequels just fall flat. Mm-hmm. This one was just it was just right up there, equal with it, and it kept you intrigued and okay, what's next? And and it didn't really the storyline did not drop like most sequels do when you get 
to that yeah, point. Yeah, it did not. It was it was good through both of them. Yeah. So. But yes, I have seen Afflicted now that you talk about that. Yeah. yeah. It's a little bit different, mm-hmm. um, but it's still... Yeah, where Afflicted is more found footage group. This is like... This is the first. This the first one focuses just on her, yeah, and okay. her her transitioning through the virus. What's going on with yeah. it? Okay, yeah, you should see it. It's a good one. It is a good one. All right, honey, you got another one. Well, she 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 yeah, she went she, through them quick. She, she, yeah, she shot through three of them. <laughs> bang bang bang! Shot them off quick. So, what's your next one, Mike? Uh, the other one I was going to talk about. You actually mentioned. Um, I, yeah, uh, it was your other movie that you took with you. The other movie I took with me yeah, you to said your party. You, to your party. Oh, Night Breeze. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it's actually one of my favorite films. Uh, of course, I'm a big Clive Barker fan. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Important. Um, important to st- uh, stress here. Are we talking theatrical? Or are we talking the director's cut? Actually, I I prefer the director's cut. Um, just because it w- there's so much brought into it that, um, whoa, that was weird. Everybody all of a sudden got contracted. Oh man. <laughs> Sorry. We're going to die. We're going to die. Oh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we live in Texas and the wind is blowing like you would not believe and it's blowing whatever Quote, Dust. Texas cedar. I'm using quotation fingers. Oh, is it quotation? Yeah, yeah. it's it's awful. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. And we, this show is a little bit late coming to you guys because I was sick with yeah. the sinus and allergy junk. It's it's just, it, it's still a roller coaster. Yeah. It is. So. Spring in Texas is fun for all of us who have allergies. Yeah. No. Um, but Nightbreed is a Clive Barker. Uh, based on a book called Cabal, written by Clive Barker. Um, this is one that I have not seen. You have seen it. It's about the monsters in the in the cemetery. The in the cemetery? I thought you started to watch it and said you didn't finish it. No. Nope. I know what it is, okay. but I've never seen it. No. It's solid. I, I love the comic book series that came out of it. I used yeah. to read it all the time. Yeah. Um, but the plot line is uh, a trouble man is drawn to a mythical place called Midian where a variety of friendly monsters are hiding from humanity. Meanwhile, a sadistic serial killer is looking for a patsy. Who plays a serial killer? Uh, it would be Cronenberg. It would be Cronenberg. That was, oh. I, I love him as, as... I love that mask. Yes. That is the creepiest damn mask, although I don't know how it I works. showed you earlier. Yeah. 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 yeah, Amazon's got that mask. I don't see how you see it, that mask. I don't either. It's got but... buttons for eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's creepy. Um... But in, in a sense, it's it's really about mythology, because mm-hmm. it's about a human trying to go live in the world of monsters. Yeah. Um, of course, it, it it takes on the whole personification of the monsters are the good guys and the humans are the bad guys. Yeah. And it's done very well. It um, is. I love the, like all the monster effects. They're, the monsters of Midian are all very different. Oh, very, very different. Um, there goes the neighborhood. <laughs> uh, but no, there's there's a variety of them. Uh, anything from, you know, twisted, disfigured, giant beasts that are warriors that they have to keep locked up because they're so violent. To people that look normal, but actually have abilities that normal humans don't have, that could be monstrous to the general public. Mm. So, um, I love one of the lines in there right before the main character gets uh, introduced into the world. Yeah, uh, one of the creatures goes, "Everything is true. God's an astronaut." Oz is over the rainbow. Midian is where the monster lives. Mm-hmm. And you came to die. Peliquin. I love Peliquin. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's just one of my... I, I really fell for it because of that whole personification change. Because, you know, if you think about it in all reality, as human, we can be really, really demented and, and vicious and brutal and 
selfish. Mm -hmm. And I think this film does a good job of portraying those qualities in humanity that really we should have already, you know, kind of let go of from our lizard brain or whatever. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I just, I just thoroughly enjoy. I, I love the movie so much that in high school, I had a band called Midian for a little while. Yeah. So, but it's a really great film. Came out in 1990, I believe. Yeah. Um, in 2004 is when they suspected, or it was announced that there was gonna be a director's cut, and then all of a sudden it was we can't find the archival footage in the the archives in Hollywood, and then everybody was like, "What the hell?" And all of a sudden, it came out that there was a cabal cut, and then everybody it, it's got a completely different ending. There's forty minutes of footage added to the film that completely changes the way Clive actually wanted the film to be compared to what came out theatrically. Mm -hmm. You should watch it. I should. Sounds like it's right up my alley. Yeah, because it came out right after he did Hellraiser. His Hellraiser came out in 87, 88, 89, somewhere in there. Uh, I can't remember. 87. 87. Uh, it's got Craig Schaefer in it. Mm -hmm. And it's got uh, Doug Bradley, which most people don't know if you've ever... Uh -huh. Watch, if you know who Pinhead is, that's Doug Bradley. Mm -hmm. yeah. And most people don't realize he was a Nightbreed. Yeah, he was a Nightbreed. <laughs> um, it's got a very uh, bombastic uh, Danny Elfman score oh, going yeah. on, too. Oh, yeah, I love that theme. We didn't talk about that one in that show, did we? I played it, actually. Oh, that's right. It'd be because you guessed it for one of the uh, you guessed it for one of them, and then afterwards I played it. I actually played yeah. the Midian theme whenever it first goes underground. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um. So yeah, Nightbreed. I love it. You should check it out. Uh, if you're an avid reader, Cabal is an is an amazing book. There's so much more. Like, it's it's not even a huge novel mm -hmm. like some of the others. It's like, it's probably half the size of Great and Secret Show or uh, Sacrament. Yeah. So. But it's it, definitely got a little bit of the of the fantasy and mythology going on with it. Oh, yeah. That That's what you're into. Yes. So, uh, you got another one? I do. Okay. This movie right here is... Uh, I might I might double book I might double book these for my last ones. Okay. Uh the two movies that got me onto Shudder in the first place because I couldn't find them on disc at the time. Right. First one is The Taking of Deborah Logan. Oh, I love that one. I have not seen that, that one all the way through yet. You need to it, watch it all the way through. It is a rough one. <laughs> it is a rough one. So the movie uh the movie centers around a grad student group who is chronicling a uh woman with uh Alzheimer's losing her or advanced set Alzheimer's losing her faculties. You know, they're trying it's sort of they're trying to give like a compassionate study of uh what it's like for someone who is uh losing all their memory and their kind of their sense of self and everything right. like that. But as they're documenting her, they're noticing a whole lot of unnerving things going on beneath the surface and a whole lot of kind of secrets that seem to be going on with the family. Okay. It 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 in it, it like it <sighs> It's ninety minutes, kind of zoom. It zooms by for me. I've seen it a couple times. I have too. And yeah, it gets to the end. It, like it gets, it's like slow burn until it gets to the end. And then there's a whole lot that happens in the last ten or fifteen minutes. There is okay, a so, whole lot. <laughs> so that's why I get. Yeah. I got about. I'd say about three quarters of the way through it. Mm -hmm. And it, I, I didn't like stop it because it was boring or anything. I think I ended up having to leave to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. It was like, I'll come back to it. And I was talking to Heather about it one time. 
was like it, it, it was it didn't sound like there was a whole lot to it and she goes how far did you get i was like about three quarters she goes oh you haven't got to there yet yeah 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 there's some great there's some great shots and effects mm-hmm. <laughs> and i really i love all the performances especially uh uh, Jill Larson, who plays uh, the main uh, play, main, the main character. Yeah. Okay. Her daughter is also uh, oh, the sister from Mad About You. Oh, okay. which I hadn't okay. seen her in anything in a long time. And uh, uh, Anne Ramsey, and she she's pretty good too. Mm-hmm. So, and this one came out when? Uh, well, it had some licensing issues. Oh, it did. It was made in 2014. Then it kind of went away. And then it got brought back through oh, streaming. Gotcha. It okay. didn't. Co- it didn't come to disc until 2018 or 19. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, the other one I got is uh, Summer of '84, which is, I'll admit, a little bit low key as far as a horror movie goes. It's a little bit more of a thriller. Okay. But it is you know, of all those movies that are like built around being '80s like. Right. This one really feels. Like, it was made in the 80s. It's got a great synth score and everything, of course. But it's a coming-of-age story in which a kid is starting to suspect his next-door neighbor of being a uh, child serial killer. Oh, okay. I've heard of that one. I have not actually seen it, though. Yeah. Like, it is... It, to the point, the movie is almost... The movie is almost tame by horror standards for a good chunk of it. And then the movie gets teeth. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, and it is very effective in the way it does it. Gotcha. Huh. So, it has a it has a left hook of an ending to me. Yeah, I've seen it come up in the list on on VOD, and I've just, I've paused on it. And went hmm. Well, the uh, the actor that plays the neighbor, uh, Caleb Emery, like he is really good in that movie. Oh yeah, and like it's because it's mainly child actors. Right, they're all very solid. Really? Like, there's nobody I can point to to be, you know, oh, uh, you know, it's a kid actor, I'm giving them right. leeway. They're actually all really so, good. So they all seem like professional child actors, kind of like the yeah. ones we see in Stranger Things or It. Yeah, or... Espe- especially the main kid and his best, like the best friend that he ends up hanging around with, that he ends up hanging around with. They're both really good t- performances. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, if you like coming of age '80s films that are like that are a bit darker and everything like that, it's got right. a little bit of that Hitchcock, what's going on behind the closed curtains type thing going on. Right, right. Yeah. But if you got Shutter, no excuses. Check out those two. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, you got another? I do. I know you. You showed me like I have several. A lot. I, I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> I went all in. Overachiever. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> well, and several of these are really good movies that I really enjoyed that I don't know that a lot of people, a lot of anybody else has seen. Right. Like, I know, like, okay, so one of them on my list is 1408. That's with John film. Cusack and Samuel L. Jackson. It's a really good one. Uh-huh. It has the best version of the Carpenter song. It's only just oh, begun. I can't hear it ever. any other way now. I can't either. <laughs> I'll be I walking either. through the store, comes on. I'm like, where's I the have, alarm clock? Where's the alarm clock? I have watched that movie about a dozen times, and I've read the story that it's based on about four or five times. Yeah, it's really and good. It's possibly my favorite King adaptation. It's solid. It is a good, solid King Even adaptation. though I'll just flat out say it. No version of that story has a good ending. None of them. The story oh, no. No. doesn't have a good ending. No. But but the ride is so good. Yeah, to get there, to yeah. get to the ending, it just there's no way to have a happy ending to that. Well, yeah. And I would say it would be a great a great VOD experience. It definitely but would. Honestly, I think you need to get it on disc because there are at least two endings. There are yes, two. There and are two. Both endings are just like what. Um, I like one more than the other. Yeah. Um, Neither one of them are the ending of the story. Either. No, they're not. Um, my favorite is the car ending. Okay. That's my favorite. Right. And that's the director's cut. Yes. Director's cut ending. Yeah, that's my favorite. Okay. Now the other one is great. Because I thought the wrong. one in the new apartment was the director's cut ending. No, no, that's the okay. other one. That's the original. Yeah. But 
I mean, I enjoyed that one a lot. I mean, Cusack is great. Oh, he's amazing. Samuel L. Jackson is great. There's not a lot of other characters in this movie. You got Maureen McCormick. Yeah. But, I mean, but there's very few actors because it's mostly... The, the girl that plays his daughter is devastating. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. She does an amazing she, job. That is, like, she's a champ of an actor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because the, the whole hook of the movie is that he's a cynical writer who is debunks. trying... Debunks. Yeah, debunks haunted, uh, haunted houses... He first got into it because he wanted to believe in the afterlife after losing his seven or eight-year-old daughter. Right. Yes. And wanted to, just like a lot of the ones that are like this, it, it, he wants to see if there's a way he can reconnect with yeah. his, his lost child. No matter how many times I've seen that movie. Like, I'll just flat out admit it. There, 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 I've seen that movie so many times, but there is a scene in that movie that hits me in the feels super hard. Yeah. Gut punch. Oh, there's a yep. few actually. There's a few, but I think I know what you're. Ta- I know, think yeah. I know what you're talking. Oh, about. Oh, and the dad's but... Lynn Carew too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, it, it's it's just a good one that a lot of that. I mean, because it came out in 2007, right? And so it's not it's not a super old movie no. by any means, but I don't think it got the hype that some of the other King ad- adaptations oh, yeah, got. Yeah. You know, it and um, Pet Cemetery, and you know, King right. has has kind of a name recognition, yeah, but it it's could, not one that's not recognized as. And, such. It, and it's kind of too new to go ahead and remake now, if you were going to. Oh, but, but I mean, why I would you touch want it. to? No, why would you want to? It is not there. Some on these lists that I see could totally be redone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and. And actually, be if they were done well, would be better than the original. Right. Fourteen oh eight is not one of them. No. You're not going to find. You're not going to find anybody who can bring that character. Um, what is it? Ennis is his last name. Ennis in the movie. Q uh, um, sex character. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mike Inslin. 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 You're not going to find somebody who can play that character like John Cusack did. Oh no! Not at it's all. It's not. No, I mean there are characters you could you could, you know, some of the minor characters you're like, okay, that could be whoever. Oh, and I whoever. forgot Tony Shalhoub's in this movie That's too. Right. Yeah, I forgot. Plays his agent. agent. Yes, he does. Publisher or whatever. So. Yeah. And then another one, going back to being foreign, um, is the ritual. Do you yeah. remember that one, Paul? It's about the four friends who decide to go hiking in in Sweden, and one of the friends gets hurt, and then they go through this like woods yeah. to get help and then they end up in this abandoned house and some creepy shit comes down and there's like a torrential rainfall and there's like yeah yeah it's a whole lot of crazy i ended up watching it after you yes. suggested it and it was good it was good. it was good but it was one that i don't know hold on let's see it came out in 2017 um but I think it was a direct uh It was a direct to VOD. Direct a VOD. Yeah. And so it was it was a really good one. It's got a solid cast and a solid premise one. That seems like it's based in folklore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's very much based in folklore at the end. And you know, I won't spoil anything on that one because that's one that I know a lot of people have not seen. Yeah. But it's a really good one. Um. So that one was that one was a fun one. Another one that we talked about, Mike and I talked about, um, that doesn't get a lot of talk about because it was one of those IFC After Dark films. Right. Right. Was um the autopsy of Jane Doe. Oh, I love that film. Yeah, I, I, I think I watched it twice the in a row. Of the, Jane. Yeah, that was amazing. I think I amazing. watched it, and then later we we all got together and we watched it again. So I like watched it like two or three times in one day. Yeah, it, uh, to me it was that good. It's just a little treasure that you don't expect. You're just like, okay, it's going to be kind of this, kind of this, it's kind of good build. It's got a very good build, and then all of a sudden you're like. Whoa. Whoa, what, what the hell? What the fuck is that? Yeah. And it was one of those ones where 
we were looking for something to watch for um for our group yeah. on a on a on a family night and i had seen it and mike had seen it well i rented it or yeah, something. something i can't like remember yeah. it was something and i rented it and we were like oh okay well we'll watch this one cuz there's been a lot of them that we've like paid to watch that we probably shouldn't have yeah but um, well, I think this one was also like a still in theaters at the time when we rented it. I think it was. I think it was. Um, it. Whoa. Um, vicious. <laughs> it came out in 2016. Um, it's got uh, Brian Cox, Emil Hirsch. Um, it, it just. Uh, and it's so great because it's like. Really, one main location and mm-hmm. like three, four characters in a mortuary. It, An it happens in a ground one. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's a yeah. basement mortuary in a small community that they don't decided not to have a big building and turn their basement into it. Yes. yes. So the cops bring the bodies to their house and they just do it in the basement. Yeah. 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 Brian uh, Brian Cox is always solid. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's very good in that. You know, I mean. The, I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's ten members of the cast. Ten. Is there ten? Ten. Yeah. yeah. All I all I can remember is Brian Cox, Emil Hirsch, and the girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah, Ophelia Lovabond. And then the one on the table. Mm-hmm. Well, but obviously. then there was the sheriff, and then there was the lieutenant, and the trooper, and there was a couple of others, and the cat. Don't forget the cat. Oh yeah, the cat was Sydney the cat. Big importance in this film. Yeah. Stanley, Stanley the cat. Yeah, Stanley. Um, yeah, I, w- I, w- I would love to know how much she got paid to just lay there the whole film. Right. Me well, like. Can you lay down? Uh, Great audition. You're hired. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't know, but. It was it was a good one that that not I know that not a lot of people have seen and it's no. really worth a watch. Oh, very very much very so. much so. It is it is by far one of the best Sunday night movies we've seen. Oh yeah, yeah. most definitely. And we've seen a lot. Oh yeah, <laughs> we watch them quite a bit. Yes. Because uh, usually we get together even when we're not doing the podcast, we just all get together and have a have a meal and what are we going to watch and yep we pick something and we all watch it and go hmm you know and sometimes it's it's funny cuz we'll each take a pick like <gasps> like you know Chris will pick something and we'll watch it and Michael pick something or I'm like hey have you guys seen this and we'll watch it i think rupture was one that yeah, we watched rupture was one um which wasn't uh, a great one. A camera Obscura was one. Camera Obscura, it wasn't great. I mean, it wasn't terrible, but you know, we've we've saw we've seen some some. Uh, what the hell are we thinking? Yeah, but we've seen some all in all, all that very, very similar title. Uh, what was that? The possession of Hannah Grace. Yes. Yeah, we we did that one. Yeah. But but the thing is, is that when we when we watch these. Especially when we find obscure ones, we're like, "Hey, let's watch this," yeah. because you never know if it's going to be good, bad, or indifferent because you don't have any reference points. Yeah, you know, so you don't know what to expect. And sometimes ones that are have the worst ratings tend to be the ones that I like the most. You know, I don't follow a you know mainstream now i'm not gonna get you no i'm not don't get it twisted i love jason michael freddie pinhead and another one that doesn't get lumped in that big category is like big name horror is Candyman. which is odd because it is very odd because tony todd is amazing oh he's great in that movie absolutely amazing and for those of you who don't know it's about a white woman mm-hmm. who is a grad student yeah and she decides to do some research on uh projects or, or, well she's doing it on or she's doing it on urban legends urban legends and, and the, her central thesis is on the candy man which is based around the cabrini green Cab- area yes of Chicago. which is a you know housing project 
And so she is a very white woman going into a very black neighborhood and dealing with this predominantly black myth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's like the boogeyman. And it's, it's solid. It's very solid. Yeah. It's um, a, it also, it like, also the majority of all that stuff, is setting it in Chicago, putting it around the race relations that go on within that city specifically or right. whatever. Oh, absolutely. None of that was related to the Clyde Barker story it's based on. No. The no. hidden. Like, it was all adapted in there. Like, Clyde Barker, you know, uh, was, was presented the script and he just gave it a thumbs up. He's like, okay. That, you yeah. Know, did did a, did a good job. Did made it a completely your own thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it's and they have have they released the new? No, not yet. Okay, so before I think the pandemic hit, they were Jordan Peele's doing. Jordan yeah, Peele was Peele. redoing like Tony a reboot. Todd is attached. Yes, Tony Todd was attached. I think the last I heard, he's going to reprise. Initially, he wasn't, and I think he is now going to reprise. Yeah. Um, so, but they're gonna they're gonna revamp it for like today. The great thing is, is they're going back and doing it again in Cabrini Green, where the original was shot. Yeah, yeah. So, I love the sequel, but the sequel completely retcons it and puts it in New Orleans. Yeah, um, like, that was the I'm not second one, right? Sequel, I'm not gonna pretend the sequel's as good, but I'm a sucker for New Orleans in, yeah. in, as a setting, and it really like it's a very romanticized horror story on that, yes. very on that um so much so if you go back and listen to the episode we did on music and themes one of the first ones you play i think it's the first one you play in the game mm. was candy man helen's, helen's theme. theme yeah From and yeah. It's, it's just yeah. beautiful and melodic and you you would glass. listen to it and if you were listening to it outside of the film you're like oh that's quite beautiful yeah oh it's a horror movie theme yeah yeah <laughs> so Got people walking around in here. What's up? Really in and out. Golly, ants. everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. It's like ants. <laughs> everywhere. So, um, but yeah, Kenny Man's a great one. Mm-hmm. And, and I still don't understand um, why he's not pushed up there with the echelon of all the other I icons. I don't know, because it's a, he's great. I mean, and Nobody. maybe because he doesn't have, like, the body count oh, that maybe. some of those do. You know, it's not super gory. Yeah. You know, I there's mean, not there a lot of points, though. There are, there are some. It's but got a hook for a hand and splits you from groin to gullet. So, well, yes, but mm. it's not as it's not as slasher in your face as like, you know. Yeah, because there's like three or four kills in the first movie, and he's. You know, my, Jason's got like 15. The point of the story is, uh, and what might also be doing it, is the point of the story ends up being about empathy. It is. It is. So, and it came yeah. out. By the end of the story, Helen has kind of gotten a, the taste of everything that go, went into the Candyman's backstory and whatever, yeah. and gone through all of his, like, goes through all of his ordeals. Yes. And he's got a lot more intense backstory than most of the other icons. Yes. Yes, he does. And you know it was it came out in 1992, so it's an older one. You know, mm-hmm. it definitely has the 90s feel about it. Yeah. And but yeah. it's it's a solid movie. It's solid. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't get pushed to that echelon because he was past that 80s slasher. Maybe. Um. You know, Freddie, Jason, early, Michael, the 70s and 80s. Yeah. You know, maybe because that uh, might have been when the slasher started taking a dive. And more of the, you know, supernatural zombies and all that started yeah. coming out. So yeah, maybe. I don't know. What do y'all think? Should Candyman be placed in that echelon with all the others? I believe he should. I believe he should too. What do you think, Paul? Should he? Should he? It's one of my favorite horror movies. So sure. Yeah. See? Okay. See. See. It's a good one. We all agree. Y'all let us know what you think. Um. Anybody got any others? You, was that your whole list? No, no, <laughs> no, no. Okay. I mean, I, I can throw one. I can throw one on, but if I do, it's like this. This one is uh, this one is one that I'll always just bring up. Seemed to get a lot of play whenever it first came out, and then people put it by the wayside. Yeah, the orphanage. 
Okay, yeah. El yeah. Infinado, the yeah. Spanish film that was produced by Guillermo del Toro, not directed by all, but when I say produced, he was in the editing room, from what I understand, and it does feel a lot like one of his movies yeah. because of it. But okay. then the movie is about a uh, woman who was raised as an orphan who purchases the orphanage where she grew up to uh, start kind of give back, give back because she had a good childhood and she wants to uh, help out help out children. But on an, the open house weekend, whenever they're reopening it, her son goes missing. And she starts getting communications from spirits from the other side, like starting to see phantom children. Oh, okay. I've only seen that one time, and it's been, I guess, probably when it came out. It has got a, it's got a very solid ending. It, is, it does. I it does. Al- I almost rate it. Not even as a horror movie, but as a movie, I rate it on nearly five stars. Okay. It's a good one. It's definitely a good one. Is that the one with the cover with the girl with the um, braided? She's kind of staring in a hallway, kind of looking back, and there's like the the main image you usually have is the kid with like a burlap sack on his head, who's okay. like hanging around the orphanage. May not be the one I'm thinking of then. It's got a, the whole tale relates to, uh, they keep citing uh, Peter Pan. Yeah. And okay. Lost, the Lost Boys. Yes. And they, it is a very emotional, like, allegory. It definitely that. is. Definitely is. Um, one that we like to talk about here at the house that everyone here seems to enjoy that does not get a lot of, of talk about is 13 Ghosts. Love that movie. I love that movie. Like, absolutely love that movie. Um, it's... Hold on. It is a remake, is not is it not? Yes. Uh, yes. That's what I thought. Because the yeah, original... It's a William Castle. The original was great. I happen to enjoy the remake on this one. Yeah. Um, it's got Tony Shalhoub in it. Yeah. And... Uh, Shannon Elizabeth, Matthew Lillard, and, Matthew Lillard uh-huh. and F. Murray Abraham. F. Murray Abraham. Yeah, and, it, it, I mean, it was another big budget attempt. Dark, to, it was one of the Dark Castle films. Yeah. Yes, it was. It was great. It's about a man who's very rich, and he is a collector of unique things. And he dies and leaves his house and his fortune to his nephew and family. Estranged. Estranged. Um, but when they while they're inside this crazy house, they realize they're not alone. Apparently, the uncle has been collecting ghosts in this glass house that encases them in spells. Rich people are weird. I know, I know. Um, but they ha- the, the house has 12 ghosts, but to, in- to harness the powers of this... the ritual of the the 12 13 ghosts they had to have um oh what did they call what was her character um the wife right right um so tony shalhoub's wife she dies in a fire wasn't the tortured soul no it wasn't the torture what was she oh my gosh my brain is i've completely yeah, they've all got nicknames. Yeah. The Withered Lover. That's it. She was the Withered, which made her the 13th ghost. And so it was going to unleash the power of this house and, and all of this. Well, so the man and his children are in this house and they're trying to, you know, get away from the ghosts. And they, it's, it's great. I mean, the ghosts themselves are fantastic. Yeah, it was one of the films when Castle did his, the original version. He had, you know, he always had his gimmicks for the theaters. Yes. Mm-hmm. And in this one, he gave you a pair of glasses that you had to put on so you could see the ghosts. Yes. Um, when they were, were to appear. That would have been amazing. I mean, can you imagine what it would be just to have one of those to hang on the wall? In I the know, frame? right? <laughs> that would be, be great. awesome. But it came out in 2001, you know. Wow, was so it that long ago? It was that long ago, yeah. But I enjoyed that one a lot. Yeah. It's one of my favorites. 
Um, because I think we talked about it a little bit back when we did the what could be f- uh, episode, mm-hmm. and that was one yep. of the ones where I was like, we could do an episode of per ghost for a backstory of each one. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and how they got there. I think it would be a great idea. You could totally, totally do that. Anybody want to do that? My idea. I get to direct it. Right. <laughs> But we wanted to take this time, like I said at the beginning, to, uh, you know, refresh some some memories um, for some films that you may have forgotten. Or if you're just getting into the to this genre, um, bring up some some ones that you may not have ever heard of that you can go back and and check out. I got two more. Two more. Okay. I'm not going to really go into them, but I'm going to give you the names. Okay. One is Midnight Meat Train. Great. Another it's Clive a great Parker. one. It's fantastic. And the other one was The Last Shift. Yes. That one was a great one. Yeah. So, and it's another kind of abandonment type. Yeah, this feel is the one about it. the cop that has the to cop watch. In, it's, it's her first, she's a rookie, and it's her first alone shift in a police station that is closing. Yeah. And. Lots of crazy things happen. Yeah, she's supposed to that. guard it till they get all the like, p- files, files and, and paperwork such. and stuff yeah. out of the building. Yes, but so it's done very well. It's very. It's got a lot of good scares in it. It does that are not your typical, typical. jump scares. Yes, it's just like all of a sudden, whoa. Yeah. So. Yep. But that's a good one to check out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There was another one similar to it right about the same time. I can't remember. And I can never remember the um, name of it. Oh. And I think this one had a guy, but the premise was a little different. It was another reason he was. It there was. Um, I can't remember. I can't remember exactly what that one was. Um, I want to say it was like an abandoned station or something. He went back to check it out or get something out of it or something like, something like that. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, if y'all find it, let us know because I'd like to watch it again. I can't remember the name of it. Right. So. Um. But uh, if you haven't subscribed to us, please do. Uh, we have multiple different ways you can subscribe to us on many different uh, locations. If you're not sure which ones, just head on over to our website, fearcentral.net. Uh, we have the top five right on the front page and then a link to all of them uh, on our about page. Uh, so you can check it out there if you're like, I don't know, do I, do I use Apple a lot? Do I use Google? Do I use, if you're not sure um, if we're on the one you use for your podcast, go on over there, check it out. We're on iHeart. Mm-hmm. Um, we're actually on Amazon Music now, so you can just use we your try Alexa. To, we try to be in all the places. Yeah. So now you can just go, hey, Alexa, play the Fear Central podcast. And, okay, play Fear Central on Amazon Music. You know. Yeah. There you go. Fantastic. Uh, on Audible now because of being on Amazon. Yep. So lots of places. Yes. Lots of places. Uh, don't forget to check out our social media. We are on Fear Central Twitter and Instagram. So give those a check out. And the face space. And the face space. Don't forget I was, the Facebook. I forget about that one nowadays. Yeah. I know. <laughs> but it's still there. It is still there for now. Very quiet. Very silent. Sure, sure. 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 <laughs> um, but uh, next week we will come at you with a completely new show with all kinds of new information uh, so we hope that you have uh, an enjoyable rest of the week we will enjoy the rest of our week and as always <laughs>